At 35 feet tall and 60 feet wide, this might be the biggest bed in Vermont. The cows, I think, would feel a lot better knowing they're on a bedded pack than if I tell them they're actually on a manure pile. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Guy Chouanier is an organic dairy farmer from Highgate with a herd of about 75 cows. They love to come in here and hang out. Of course, they're feeding, but they also like to socialize and just relax. Sort of the same thing they do when they're out to pasture. So we try to keep the same routine year round. This covered barnyard allows Chouanye to create an indoor pasture where the animals can roam, grab a snack, and get a good scratch. More than a cow Shangri-La, this bedded pack is a living, breathing organism. I like to look at this barn as my total fertilizer program because really this is also for me a fertilizer factory because it's producing what I need to grow crops. So I'm trying to support a world here that is living and breathing just like the soil. But yet I need to remember that the cows need to be comfortable and, and live on this all winter. So I can't let it start composting too early. So I'm working with my ingredients, keeping the uh, balance between bedded pack and compost pile. So I'm trying to control the heat and I'm trying to control the amount of air that I'm locking in the pack. And that helps me with the firmness and keeping the cows a little bit more uh, comfortable during the winter months. Striking a balance between pack and pile means management. Every day, Chouanier adds hay and minerals and monitors the temperature in order to control the composting process. The cows will spend about 200 days here from mid-October until mid-May before being put back out on pasture. Pigs are brought in to root the pack and further the composting process. In the fall, Chouanier will clean out the barn and by then, there will be 800 tons of material to use as fertilizer on his fields. There we go. Chouanier built the barn in 2005 as a part of a cost share with NRCS, the National Resources Conservation Service. The total cost of the project was $100,000. Over time, I've seen that it cost me about $10,000 from beginning to end to maintain and manage this type of system. That $10,000 you do need to figure um, every year. But if you look at the building, I think over time, the building itself isn't gonna cost me much. But the, at least whatever I spend on the inside, I feel is a better return for me as a farmer because it all goes back to the soil. For Schwanye, the benefits of managing his herd on this system far outweigh the costs. I've seen huge benefits with this building. That's why I love it so much. That's why they love it so much. Just in cow comfort, you know, compared to the Thai stall that they used to be in uh, most of the time in the winter, coming out here for them is just like going out to pasture. It's a lot easier on their joints, a lot easier on their feet. I noticed that my vet bills have dropped quite a bit, and I know it's because they're less stressed. You know, they're able to help themselves. So I've seen a lot of benefits, and I've seen a lot of cost reductions. And even though I have seen extra expense in managing this type of a building, but I've seen it be offset by the savings through the years. The return on investment that Chouanier receives also benefits the environment by keeping nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus contained in the soil instead of running off into waterways and Lake Champlain. It's a nice little package of fertilizer and manure all in one. Chouanier's system also serves as a model for UVM Extension researchers to get the word out about sustainable methods for managing nutrients. I'm trying to think positive, but straw is awesome bedding. Is that your question? How awesome is Guy? <laughs> Jen Colby oversees the pasture program for the University of Vermont Extension's Center for Sustainable Agriculture. One of the wonderful things about the bedded pack situation was that we were very much learning alongside him. And he's a wonderful partner to learn with, and he um, respects and appreciates information, and he contributes as well. So there's this really fantastic back and forth. And it's not that he's not a busy farmer. He's a very, very busy person, but he's, he's taken some of these projects very seriously, which then helps us help other farmers. And ultimately, when I ask him, is this something you would do again, or is, has this been useful for you, then the answer that he generates is what we'll be able to use for other farmers.
And that's the whole point of applied research. We want to do research that is useful for farmers. The care that Chuanyi brings to the management of his farm business is as much about good business practice as it is a philosophy for life. This is food for your soil. We cannot do without the life under the soil. We might as well admit it. Without it, we be, wouldn't be here. So I better take darn good care of it. So this building helps me produce food for all the life under the soil. It sounds simple. It's a simple little thing, but you need to, you need to concentrate on that. And I do on this farm, and it's been working. Guichuanye packs a lot of life into a farm that's been built from the ground up. In Highgate, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence.